Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is... Just making sure I haven't messed anything up here. Yeah, we're good. It is Thursday, July the 8th, 2021. It's another technical level podcast. Uh, the summer needs to slow the fuck down. Like, put the pump Seriously. the brakes. Seriously. Pump the brakes. Pump the brakes. I haven't, I haven't gotten out the house more than like four times. Go uh, pump the brakes. Uh, it's another Tech Health Podcast. Uh, if you're joining us for the first time today, thank you very much. We talk about video game stuff, movies and TV stuff, and a little bit of our, uh, ourselves, because we're uh, full enough of ourselves to think that anyone gives a shit. Hopefully you have a good time while you're here. If you're joining us live, thank you so much. Uh, and make sure to hit the follow before, uh, before heading out. Mm-hmm. <sighs> for those of you on YouTube, bless you for continuing to watch this throughout the summer months. Summer months always a downturn in uh, in video watching time. Everyone's outside. Yep. You know, even if the Don't world is, is on fire, everyone's outside, and I can't blame them. You know, uh, being uh, being stuck inside is uh, has has definitely expedited uh, people wanting to get back out there into the real world. So not surprising. Uh, we got another great show lined up for you for uh, today, of course, as always. Uh, and before we get started, there is uh, but one very important question to ask, and that is, Mr. Maximus Black, how was your week? Oh, how was my week? It's been uh, it's been another uh, bleh week. Um, okay. I mean, Kayla got a new car yesterday. That so happened? I guess that, that was good. I mean, it wasn't for me, so it's not like, you know, I mean, I'm happy for her, but... Obviously, she's having a much better week than I am. Uh, you, couldn't, uh, you couldn't just be like, yeah, we got a new car for Kai and Kayla. It's like, oh, well, it's not for me. So, you know, I can't be that happy about it. It's not for me. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, I decided to buy it. I mean, she had no idea yeah, I was looking yeah. to get a car. So, you know, I knew it was coming. But yeah, good choice, um, though. Literally the car that I'm looking at right now to replace the Ram. Yeah, it's uh, got a heck of a deal uh, on it. So couldn't say no. And I looked at all the competitors i've looked at the rav4 i looked at the uh the nissans i looked at oh god uh, nissan should have never even been in the question no it wasn't it was <laughs> the first one out it was yeah, the first one out and it's gone i looked at uh the hyundai's um that's looked, not even I, really in it I, lo- I looked at all i looked at all the three the, the three in the category right now that basically will fill depending on what you're looking for is the rav4 the cx5 and the and the fucking um forester all yeah. all other models are in that category are just you don't even they don't yeah. matter they're they're there but uh, they don't matter. What was nice about the why I ultimately went with the Mazda number one they gave me um, you know ten thousand dollar trade in for her old Civic which was it's a hell of a uh, start. Little, it was a lot more than <laughs> uh, the other two and so um, that helped um, and then they had some other incentives going on. And they just want to sell me. They want to sell me a car. I mean, I'm a hard ass when it comes to buying cars, so I know when I'm getting a deal. Um, and the reality is, man, I took all the cars out for test drives over the last week, and the Mazda handles the tightest. The in the, the well, they're very the, sporty. The entire Mazda line has always been sporty. Yeah. I mean, the only thing that I that I didn't prefer from the Mazda over the other ones is the look of the car in terms of like aesthetically. It's looked the same since like 2017. They haven't changed the look. But that's also it's not why a bad it's, look. But that's yeah. also why it's as cheap it's as so it cheap. is. Yeah, yeah, because they've they've perfected it. They've 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 printed out you know endless amounts of these things. Yeah. Um. So you know they they cut the cost down immensely. Um. You know I I will say that like you know a couple of the other cars I guess from I, I it's all subjective really. Some people think the Mazdas look phenomenal. And, uh, you know, it's the not, thing it's about an, that it's not model an ugly car. is that it's not a standout car, but it also ages really well. So it's a car yeah. that even though it's from 2017 model year, yeah. in another five years, it's not going to look ancient. Whereas yeah. if you were to buy the current model RAV, which I think looks okay right now, five years, it's going to look like fucking weird. Yeah. It's going to stand yeah. out in a bad way. Yeah. Yeah, and the the biggest thing was is is the bells and whistles you get. It's it's the interior, the the all the, the bells, all, all, all the whistles, all of them, dude. We're talking like, <laughs> you know, heated seats, you know, keyless <laughs> entries, fucking leather interior, fucking. I mean, it is a like, bell and whistle emporium. Yeah, it's like the other models. You got to spend a thousand dollars here, three thousand dollars here. You got to like, 
you know, with this, we didn't get the baseline, but we got like the mid, the mid tier. And so this one doesn't have the sunroof. We opted yeah. to not get a sun. Kayla, she had, she's had a sunroof in her Honda forever. It, the window always stayed closed. They, she just never used I it. I have one and I never um, used it. I only got it because I couldn't, I literally, when I got this Rav, there was no option for yeah. me to not have it in the car. Yeah, so they, there was only one basically like model up that had like the sunroof and then a couple of other small things. Probably that the just limited w- or some shit at the very top yeah. or some weird. I'm not, I'm not sure, but there's seven uh, trim. There's seven dude. fucking trim levels in the in the in the yeah. CX5. Yeah, the, 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 the one we got it it just <laughs> nailed everything. I mean, even just the stuff from like clicking the button on the back of the trunk to like have it open and close without having to pull it up and pull it down. Yeah, yeah. Um, all the, all the stuff that you have to pay for on other cars, it just comes base. Like it comes standard um, with, with the, with the Mazda. So it was a, it was an easy decision. She loves the car. She's ecstatic. So that was uh that was good. Um, she had her civic for over six years. Um, you know, Fun it wasn't fact, that CX five, also the highest safety rating in the entire segment yep. tied by the, Forester, uh, with both of them, the only thing is the headlights are less than perfect. Everything else is the highest crash test yeah. rating they they can give. Yeah, so I wanted something safe, reliable. Yeah. Um, so we got it. It's good. She got that Mazda red. So she uh, she went down, picked out her color. She wanted the red. So do you? Can you can you put the three M shit on that, or is it already on there? Uh, you can put it on. I would put uh, it on because the one thing that I've seen in all the reviews for that specific red is it chips tips, really yeah. easily and so 3ming the hood or something would be not a well, bad idea i got i opted to get the paint protection and I- interior protection so they said that that helps with uh with the rock chips and stuff oh, okay. that happens on the highway i don't have the film yeah but they they do put a protective like layer of whatever the fuck they put on there yeah, yeah, yeah. um so we did do that but other than that um oh, it's, a beauty. Good. it's a nice car it's 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 great family suv so well, it's like um, you said big, it's spacious. like you're getting audi yeah. Or like Lexus, yes, for three hundred dollars a month less if you were leasing it. It's literally yes. almost identical interiors. You sit into it, it feels like you're in an Audi. Yeah, hundred percent. It's fucking wild. Hundred percent. So, um, outside of that, uh, everything is going good. Putting up another house for sale. I'm gonna mm. sell our old house. Uh, market is still, you know, it's it's hot. cooling down a little bit, but it's still hot. It's still shit is still going. <laughs> okay. um, well, by cooling so, down, do you mean it? Ha- it stopped skyrocketing so yeah. we, we're, we're, we're still yeah. so, we're still up just not skyrocketing anymore yeah so uh so do, doing that and then outside, outside of that man just been fucking chilling max and relaxed actually enjoying some weather which is nice we're get finally getting some sun instead of just rain and cloud um and like you said in the beginning summer is going way too fucking fast man oh it's, my god it's i mean it happens every year i don't know why we're shocked every year when it happens yeah, but it it doesn't it doesn't get any slower. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, like the really crappy part is you know, um, is that at least here. So and it's it's not it's it wouldn't be any different if if the working conditions for me were different. But like obviously I I have the luxury that if I want to take an afternoon off and enjoy the weather, I can do that and then just work at night. But M doesn't get that luxury and it's one of those summers where her days off are rain and her working mm. time is sun is sun and she works back shifts so even when she's technically off she has to sleep until like three four o'clock in the afternoon to get like a whopping five hours six hours of sleep and so and so she just never sees any of this good weather so today we ate on the back deck for breakfast we at least sat in the sun for like you know a half hour and uh, and got some vitamin D for uh, for the time that we get on the back deck, but yeah, it's been one of those summers, and and uh, I guess I'm just happy that I guess we're not getting completely mauled like the West Coast has been. Uh, but uh, all the same, yeah, slow the fuck down, summer. What the fuck? Give us, you know, give us some more time, please, please. Maybe we'll get lucky, and September will be like basically just an extension. You know, maybe so. global, maybe global warming will uh, will give us a, yeah. a, a little an uh, extra month, a little you know? month, extra time. Uh, my week was, uh, well, I didn't buy a new car this week. That's not until September, but, uh, I did, uh, basically not a lot. Honestly, this was a really like big down week for me because, uh, of a number of reasons. Well, I started Legend of Mana, um, for a review. Uh, that's probably going to get cut in half and then I'll finish that after because Monster Hunter Stories 2 comes out tomorrow. 
and that's got priority, so I'm gonna hop on that. That's basically like Monster Hunter, but Pokemon, so I'm a little interested in whatever the fuck's going on there. Uh, so we'll check that out. And then I'll get back on mana afterwards and do both reviews kind of back to back, but that- uh, that's why I started. I played some, um... My days were just awkward where I ended up only having like a few hours to stream at night, so I was just playing like fucking Call of Duty multiplayer and shit uh, off and on um, in, in between. And then otherwise, I also spent a couple of days um, mostly off here in the last two days because I went to the doctors for my biopsy on my foot. And so right now, I'm very interested as to how I'll do by the end of this podcast, but... Um, I've got, so I've got stitches and shit in one of my toes right now because they've, <laughs> the biopsy was on my, my, she, she chose my pinky toe. It was quite an experience. So, so you get in and it's basically like they take a hole punch and they just hole punch a part of your body and that's what they send off to get, to get tested or looked at under a microscope. Great. And, uh, it's not, it's not like a fucking enormous hole. It's not like an actual hole punch, but like that's more or less what the functional, functionality of it is. So, uh, for me it had to come from my foot. And I had to sit for like 20, 30 minutes on the table because my feet are going, like, they go purple right now when I sit um, with my, uh, like, thighs or anything, or even if I stand still. So she wanted them to be purple when she got the biopsy. So I sat for like 20, 30 minutes at the doctor's office. She comes in. So there is all sorts of blood in my feet right now that have just been sitting there for like 20, 30 minutes. She comes in and she said, all right, we're going to do a biopsy. I'm going to take it out of your pinky toe because uh, it's like the, the purpleiest. I said, great, awesome. And in my head, I'm thinking, this is going to bleed like a fucking faucet because I've been sitting up for 20 or 30 minutes and it's a high blood pressure area to begin with. And now I'm just sitting here, right? So she goes, all right, we're going to go in. So she freezes my toe. Uh, you know, you got to get the needle in there uh, and, and freeze the toe up. Uh, and then uh, and then goes in and, and grabs it. And I swear to God, it was fucking immediate, bro. It just was like... It, like if you, it was just, it was literally a faucet. Like the, she punched the hole out of my toe, and blood was just instantaneously flowing from my foot onto the floor. Just blood everywhere, all over the floor. And she was like, "Oh," and I was like, "Yeah, that looks cool." And she was like, "Oh, don't worry about it. It's fine. It's not as much blood as you think it is." And it's just like you know the usual doctor speak. Blood's just fucking leaking out of my foot. It's like, all right, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna put a stitch in this to stop it from bleeding, because I don't think gauze is gonna stop this from bleeding. And I said, all right, so she got, she got the kit out, and she gets one stitch in, or whatever, and, uh, and, you know, s s uh, uh, pulls it tight, still bleeding like a fucking faucet. She's like, all right, we're gonna need more than one stitch on this to stop it from bleeding. But she had put the needle down, so now she can't use that one. So she's like, all right, I gotta go get another fucking needle, because this one's contaminated now, because you know, I, I sat it down. So... So she puts that down, but she knocks the rest of the kit over on the ground. So now there's metal utensils all over the floor. My blood right. is all over the floor. My fu the fucking foot still got like thread and a needle hanging out the bottom of it. I preface: I hadn't slept in 24 hours. I literally 24 hours straight and four hours, five hours of sleep the night before I pulled that 24 hours for this because I needed my feet to be fucked up for her to do this. So I was up super late and I didn't sleep. So I was dead. Fucking gone. And then I'm looking down and she's like, it's a good thing you don't have a faint reflex. And I swear to fuck, as soon as she said that, within uh, 10 seconds, I'm going, like, oh, I'm going, oh, I've, and I've never fainted in my life. Not even close. No matter how fucked up I was, in, like as a kid, like taking the saw through my hand, whatever. Zero. I've never had any problem seeing my own blood, anyone else's blood. But she said that, and that in combination with like zero sleep for 24 hours, no water, no nothing, and I'm bleeding like a faucet. I, I started going, and I was like, I was like, Doc, this is fucking weird. I've never fainted before, but I might actually faint. I'm not sure because I've never fainted before. She, but I was like, I'm not feeling so hot right now. She's like, All right, well, lay down because you're too big to pick off off the fucking ground. <laughs> so I, so I laid down. I laid down. And, and like within like, like 15 seconds of laying down, I was fine again, but I was just you fucked. You felt it coming. The I felt the, the was room going. was starting to go. You're like, I was oh, like, oh, that's not good. <laughs> and I was, so like, I, I fucking, I get down and she puts like, I think, I think there's probably three stitches in here before it stopped bleeding. She finally got it done. She's like, all right, you're good to go. She's like, you shouldn't faint anymore. I said, great. Cause I have to drive home. So that's comforting to know that I'm probably not going to faint anymore. So how I know I was like super tired and that was mostly why I was about to pass out when I got home you know mom wants to hear about you know this whole thing right so I'm talking to her 
but she's she's just got out the shower, so I'm talking through the door. So I have to talk kind of loud, and I'm using a lot of energy. I'm a halfway through my story, and I was like, start the room was starting to go, Whoa, so I had to go sit like, in the chair oh, again. Yeah. So Dad was like, you need to fucking sleep. So I went yeah. downstairs, uh, but unfortunately, I was at that point where I was like so exhausted that my body was like, no, you're just not going to sleep anymore. So I only got like four hours of sleep that day. So the subsequent two days, I fucking, dude, I hibernated like I've never hibernated before. Yesterday, I woke up at four o'clock in the afternoon. Holy shit. Four o'clock. I woke up, I looked at my phone. I was like, oh, it's probably like noon. Oh, there goes it's my whole four. fucking day. It's four o'clock in the afternoon. So I, yesterday was I watched the football match and then I went to bed. That was my entire, that was my entire day. So that was my week. Very exciting week. Doctor's office, sleep, sleep, more sleep. And now I'm trying to like get my body clock to go back. Cause last night I wasn't tired at like five o'clock in the morning. Because I've been so fucked for the last week. So, not a lot of work happening this week. Mostly just doctors and sleep. Uh, but uh, we'll wait for 15 days to get the results on that. And uh, and continue on. So, not very exciting, but uh, a bit of a meme. Now, let's talk about some video game news, Mr. Blay. Right. Humble Bundle. You know what Humble Bundle is? I do. It's been around for a hot minute. I think 2010, when it first cracked. Uh, not long after we started our, our venture in this whole uh, industry, really. Where originally it was more or less, uh, you know, uh, 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 publisher or, or developers would uh, would basically gift Humble Bundle X number of whatever, excuse me, uh, copies. And you could buy them like in a bundle, literally, that's why the name. And you could choose how much of that money you spent and how much, I guess, went to charity at the end of the day. Uh, and then how much, I guess, went to the developers, I think, was the split that you would choose from. And... Uh, that went on for quite some time. Eventually they got, uh, Humble Bundle got bought out. I can't remember who bought them now off the top of my head. I think it was IGN or some, some fucking publication bought them. Uh, anyway, they went through a couple of phases of testing here in the last, oh, year, year or so, I think, uh, where they were testing new splits, where they removed the slider entirely, first of all. For some customers, as to choosing how much to go uh, where, so there was no slider anymore. Obviously, people were like, excuse me, what the fuck? So they had to walk that bad boy back. Uh, and then they were they were testing something else where it was going to be 15% went to Humble Bundle every time. Which again, people were like, excuse me, what the fuck? So they walked that back. But it's back again! And this time, it's not even 15 it's 15 to 30% going to a Humble Bundle, ba basically putting it in the same category, if not worse, than Epic Game Store and Steam in terms of how much of a cut uh, that, uh, that goes to the company. So not to charity, not to anyone else, it's just by default, you buy from Humble Bundle, 15 to 30% go into Humble Bundle. And they're saying that, uh, that this is to, you know, maintain or like uh, to expand our vision of what Humble Bundle can be in the future, which... I'm not sure what their plans are, but it, it was doing a pretty good job of doing exactly what it was supposed to do for like a decade. So hmm. I don't know what their plans are that they would require 15 to 30 percent of all revenue coming through the Humble Bundle. But people aren't even all like, I mean, people are obviously a bit upset about the, the cut because it's a bit, that's deep. I mean, 15 to 30 percent, no fucking joke. Uh, but it was the fact that they were trying to do it without telling anyone up front at first. Which is, which is more or less like cheating charity at that point. People thinking that their money is going towards charity. Nope, gotcha. It's 15 to 30% is going to Humble Bundle. And then, you know, after that, the money goes on to wherever you thought it was going to go. So uh, a lot of people are just perma-bouncing from hum uh, Humble Bundle now. Uh, and I don't blame them, really. I mean, it was originally for a very specific cause, and now it's just like a totally different beast that doesn't make it any different from, like, fucking Steam and Epic Games. It's very strange. Uh, and just continue to call it Humble Bundle is a bit weird because it's not really serving the same purpose that it used to. I never actually used Humble Bundle per uh, personally anyway. Um, I don't know if you ever picked up a, a, a pack over the years. Uh, I think I might have done it once. I think I might yeah. have done it one time. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I know a ton of, I know a ton of people who do and have used it a lot. Uh, and they, uh, and they oftentimes tell me when a, a Humble Bundle, hum Humble Bundle comes up that has like, uh, several pretty good uh, uh, games in it. But yeah, I, I, I didn't really personally use it, but I do know that a lot of people are walking away from it now 
And uh, I can't say I blame them. That's kind of a fucking sketch thing to do, trying to make it look like you're still the humble bundle, but then also just outright take 15 to 30 percent off the top, and only after you got caught with your pants down, start talking about why you're taking 15 to 30 percent off the top. So uh, good luck with the new owners over there at IGN h handling that fucking meme. You may or may not have just completely destroyed the, <laughs> the fucking uh, humble bundle. But yeah, people are, are calling it uh, all sorts of different names now, but it's definitely not being called the humble bundle uh, anymore. So we'll wait and see if they stick stick to that. Uh, this might be such enormous backlash uh, again that they back off on it, but I don't think it matters anymore. I think they've effectively fucking killed themselves. Uh, so uh, well done. Uh, Grand Theft Auto 6, we talked about some of, some of the leaks last week, specifically the time frame, roughly, of when they thought the game was going to come out, uh, being, I think we were talking about 2025 or some shit, uh, so there were other parts of that, and some of them were actually, uh, largely confirmed, so the details that we know are actually more confirmed now, uh, are, uh, and not just rumor, is that it is, in fact, set in a modern day and evolving Vice City map, uh, multiple protagonists, just like we had in GTA 5, and it is, in fact, still 2024 to 2025. I would hazard a guess to choose the later number every time. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so those those rumored bits and pieces are, in fact, uh, more or less confirmed now. So, we are going back to Vice City. It's not the 80s anymore, but uh, we are going back to Vice City, which I think is kind of exciting, because Vice City was probably my favorite of all the Grand Theft Auto games. Uh, it'd be fun to see what it looks like 30 years after the first setting uh, of the original game. Uh, actually, more than that, it'd be 40 years uh, at that point. Fuck, we're getting old. So 40 years uh, after the setting of the original game. Uh, and, uh, and, and what I'm interested in, too, is they mentioned that it's an evolving map. So if this is going to be a game where they do it like GTA V, where it's, it's, it exists for so long in between titles... Um, you know, if they're going to do if they're going to do released content that actually evolves the map over time, that's kind of interesting. You know, construction zones and all that shit in in, in a city, uh, and kind of evolve uh, evolve it as time goes on. There's a lot that they can do there, and I'm sure uh, I'm sure they'll do a good job because it's fucking Rockstar, and I mean they haven't fucking missed ever. Actually, for God's sake, they made Rockstar table tennis, and it was dope. I mean, like, if you could make a table tennis game dope. You've won. You've won. If you can go from Grand Theft Auto and then one one year go fuck at table tennis and still make dope table tennis, you've won. And honestly, give me more Rockstar table tennis. I want more. I want. Give me new Rockstar table tennis. Nobody else is doing it. Get on it. <laughs> uh, Nintendo. Oh, this was the big thing yesterday, Mr. Black. Did you see this? Lots of people talking about this. The new Switch. So we talked about, um, we talked about our, and several times, our, our, uh, estimates on when a new Switch would pop up, or new model of the current Switch, not like a new console necessarily, but like a new model, um, and, uh, you know, we were estimating, I, I originally estimated the end of this year, and then the coronavirus happened, and then on top of the coronavirus, nobody can buy computer parts, or components, and so I thought that there was no way they were going to do anything. Well, Nintendo figured it out, Mr. Black. They solved the Rubik's Cube. Mm. While they're changing almost nothing about this console, they can buy Samsung OLED screens. And so they're making a OLED version of the Switch. N almost nothing else of note is changing in here. I'll go over the, uh, the scant changing details here besides that new screen. Uh, but yeah, the screen is seven inches now, well beyond my penis. It was closer before at 6.2, now it's seven. <laughs> it was 6.2 before, now it's seven. I need surgery for that makeup. And then 720p, so it's the same resolution. It's the same resolution as it was before. Uh, so yeah. that's not surprising, because when we talked about, like, a new Switch, we did we did talk about how we thought the body would would likely maintain the same size so that they didn't have to, pre like, redo the fabrication of everything. So they're just... The bezels are smaller, which allows it to go from 6.2 to, uh, to 7, which is, if you're wondering in penis terms, that's the equivalent of shaving your pubic hair to give the illusion of an extra inch uh, of length. Getting rid of the bezels. The pubic hair is the penis's bezels 
trim it if you want to have uh, the illusion of a bigger dick. Just a pro tip on that one. Uh, so it is same resolution, 720p. Uh, it has an improved kickstand, Mr. Black. Ooh. An improved kickstand. And I'm not talking about its bigger dick now. It's an actual improved kickstand. Instead of, like, the flimsy little fucking thing that it was like my phone case, like this... This thing. <laughs> uh, it's an actual full-length... Uh, kind of a kickstand, so it will it will be a lot more robust than it was uh, in the past. Uh, what else was there? Oh, better audio, whatever that means. Uh, not that I know a lot of people playing the Switch without headphones, because that, no matter how good the audio is, probably going to be pretty bad. If I had to take a fucking wild guess on that one. Yeah. Uh, so better audio, a wired LAN port. We're getting Ethernet on the dock, Mr. Black. Wow. What year is it again? I, I think it's 2021. Tw it's 2021. Okay, we're getting well, we're getting wired internet on a Nintendo console in 2021. It's happening. Uh, it's unfortunately replacing the USB port that's on the internal part of the dock. There's still the two USB ports up front, but in order to make room for the LAN port, they had to axe the uh, USB port uh, uh, on the inside uh, of that. Not that I think that's going to ruin anyone's day. I think most people were probably using that internal port to plug the U current USB adapter LAN port into that USB port so that they had wired internet uh, to the Switch because the uh, the Wi-Fi on the Switch is, well, it's it's actually fucking horrible. I mean, everything internet is bad on Nintendo, but the I mean, really, the Wi-Fi is atrocious. Oh, totally. uh, it's really, really bad, so... Having that is uh, is a nice bonus for sure, despite the fact that pretty much everyone probably already has the USB dongle. But nevertheless, I'll give them points for joining us in, in the wired land. Uh, and beyond that, we have... Uh, and oh yes, they're, uh, they're upgrading the internal storage, Mr. Black. Current one, I think, is 32 gigs. 32 gigs of storage. That's like a game and a half on that bad boy. Uh, but you know what? Nintendo heard all the cries, the outcry for uh, for more storage, so that you can play more of your favorite Nintendo games. And so they really stepped it up and bumped that internal storage up to sixty four gigs. Boom! Bet you didn't see that coming. Sixty four gigs. Read them and weep, Mister Black. In the land of. In the land of flash storage being so fucking cheap. They're cheap. How in the fuck are we at 64 gigs on an updated model of the Switch? How is it's that cheap. not 256 or Seriously. like 128? On yeah, 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 yeah. Like I'm not going to ask for a terabyte. That, like, that's going to make it an expensive console, right? But like, 128? I think we can pull off 128. 256? Yeah. But like, 128 would be cool? I don't know. But 64 gigs. Bro. Thank you, Nintendo, I guess. You know, we get two games on there. We did it. Uh, it launches, Mr. Black, at $349, which is about $50 more than the current uh, sale price of the Switch. Uh, the body is the same, so the current Joy-Cons will also work. So if you've got spare Joy-Cons laying around the house and you want to use them already uh, as, like, multiplayer... Options, they totally work. They'll still attach to the screen, etc., etc. Because it is exactly the same body. It's just the screen uh, has less bezel uh, to make it work. Uh, but that also means, Mr. Black, that the drifting Joy-Con issue, totally still a problem. <laughs> so, cool. Because they haven't changed them. It's the same fucking, same thing. Uh, so, it, and they did confirm they are the same Joy-Con. So, they will also drift in time. Uh, beyond that... Uh, what else do I have written here? Oh, this also seems, yeah, I'm saying this is just me talking now. This also seems to signal, uh, that they may treat the Switch like they did the older Game Boy and 3DS models. Where, like, back in the day, you know, they had, excuse me, they had, um, uh, a million fucking 3DS models, a million fucking Game Boy models, um, you know, for one generation. And I suspect they're probably going to do that with the Switch. Now that they have the Switch and they don't have to focus on a console and a handheld, and the Switch is kind of like Nintendo's wet dream in terms of a format, it allows them to be like a docked console and a handheld format. 
Yeah. I think we're going to get like just inundated with models of the Switch, much yeah. like we did in the past with those other consoles. And all of those are going to have like these tiny little revisionist pieces that aren't really substantial until you wait for like four fucking models until you get to a point where it's not just like a different color swap. You know, it's an actual upgrade. It's going to be an iPhone, man. And so, uh, an I, st iPhone. I still expect a, like, Switch Pro or a Super Nintendo Switch, which I think is the name that they should go with, personally, uh, in the future, probably within the next 18 months of, or within 18 months of this one launching. So this one comes out October 8th. It's the same day that the, uh, the new Metroid game pops up. Uh, and then I suspect within 18 months of that, we're going to get the next round and it's probably going to be a pro model thing where the internals actually get upgraded because even for Nintendo and, and, and meeting certain like spec for Nintendo in terms of visual, uh, fidelity and, and capability of, of the console, even for Nintendo, the switch and another, like, uh, I mean, by that time, what's so that's, that's going to be two years. That's going to be pushing it. The, 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 I mean, the switch is already pushing it right now. But in two more years, I mean, the, my like phone games are going to look and run better than than yeah. the Switch, and so I, I think there we're probably within that for you know time frame for that to to pop up a newer uh, model with newer guts. Uh, but for now, there you go. So if I mean, I don't know who this is for. Nintendo fans will buy it uh, as their. You know, I made this tweet. I don't think it matters. Nintendo fans will buy fucking goddamn anything. Uh, they, you know, if they already have two Switches, this will be their third. If they got four. This will be their fifth. Um, you know, th this is, re this should really be for people that haven't bought a Switch yet, and now yeah. they're finally getting games that they care, they don't care about. Maybe it is, in fact, the Metroid game. Now we pick it up. And on top of that, it's really only for people that, that either A, in my opinion, okay, don't have a Switch already, or B, have a first-gen Switch that mostly use it in handheld mode. Because by now, the battery life is likely going to be a bit better. Uh, than it is. We already know that there is better battery life in like the two or three SKU changes that the Switch has had over the last couple of years. Uh, so better battery life. Maybe the Switch is starting to, to kind of run out of its juice, like the original one. Uh, and then if you're playing mostly in handheld, you're the one benefiting from the, ma the one significant upgrade this console is getting, and that's the screen. Yeah. So if you're somebody that plays your Switch mostly docked, this is a complete waste of money, and you'd be insane to buy it. Uh, but I'm sure that won't stop some people from fucking buying it anyway, even though they already have a Switch. So, uh, all the best to all you out there. Uh, good luck against the scalpers. 349 launch price. What do you, uh, what do you think the, uh, scalper price is gonna be for this, Mr. Black? Let's get a, let's get a guesstimate. Couple months out. What do you think? Uh... Um, it's going into the holiday season, too. That's an October 8th release. Thousand bucks. It's Lil, uh, so Lil Timmy and Lil Sally. Christmas present, yeah. thousand bucks. Gonna, I think it's going to go up to a thousand dollars around Christmas time if people can't get their hands on it. And right. I think like a regular price will probably be like seven hundred. Will probably be like your standard. Double. But some people, some people will get away with about a thousand, and yeah. people will pay for it. Oh, it'll happen. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. I suspect. I suspect between October and November, double the price. Yeah. Mid to end November into December, they still can't get their hands on it. All of a sudden, people will be paying a thousand dollars for sure. Uh, yep. To get their hands on it in time for Christmas. And we'll find out because it's only a few months away. So let's wait and see what happens there. Next up. Uh, Ubisoft. I, this is the dumbest fucking tagline I've written, but you know what? I'm probably going to turn it into the podcast title. Ubisoft is going Ubi hard for Assassin's Creed, Mr. Black. <laughs> That's <laughs> Look. I'm fucking calling this podcast Ubi Hard. I'm almost positive. All right. Do what you got to do. <laughs> Ubisoft is going in Ubi Hard for Assassin's Creed with the announcement uh, of Assassin's Creed Infinity. Did you see anything of this pop up on your timeline? No. Okay. God. So let me fucking just grace your, uh, your brain with some of this information then. So Assassin's oh Creed Infinity, a live service platform for Assassin's Creed. Exactly what that that series needed live service uh games are all connected but look and feel different which in my opinion is more or less what already is already happening what it is it's already right now okay 
Uh, inspired by Fortnite and GTA Online, Mr. Black. Doesn't that inspire some confidence? Huh? Huh, I mean, they're bangers. Fortnite and, and GTA uh, Online, I mean, that, they're, that's some good shit. You know what that shit sounds like? It sounds like buzzwords. That's what that shit sounds like. It does, yeah. Fortnite, GTA Online. <laughs> Ubisoft. <laughs> Ubi hard. Ubi hard. Uh, both Quebec City and Montreal teams will be working on this instead of going back and forth. So traditionally for the last several, you know, uh, go around for uh, Assassin's Creed, it would be the Quebec, uh, Quebec team doing one, and then the next one would be you know, Montreal, and they'd kind of like back and forth. Kind of similar to how Call of Duty has been run with a couple of studios. Uh, you know, kind of a TikTok pattern. Uh, but they'll be working together uh, this time around. Uh, probably because I guess this is their, what they called like their biggest project ever for this shit. And to be honest, the Assassin's Creed games, already pretty big fucking projects to begin with. Uh, I mean, they're, they're pretty massive games and whoever the sorry fuck is that has to hide all the collectibles that they put in every one of these fucking games, uh, you're not getting paid enough money. Yeah. And when you, when you open a map in Assassin's Creed, if you aren't immediately stricken with enormous amounts of anxiety for how many map markers <laughs> appear, then you're a special kind of fucking person. Because, like, I'm, I mean, even as, like a, like, a semi-completionist like myself, I open that up and I immediately just say, no, I don't want to play the game anymore because it's just too much. Yeah. It's too much going on. So if this is going to be an even bigger fucking undertaking, I don't know what the fuck is going on here, but they're going to be pushing map markers to the outer limits of the, of the human imagination, I'm sure, uh, when this rolls out. Now... Uh, we have talked in the past how Ubisoft has had, uh, in the recent, uh, you know, not too uh, long ago, the sexual, you know, misconduct allegations levied uh, against several, and I mean several, uh, Ubisoft employees, many of them kind of higher ranking individuals within the company. Uh, and uh, Ubisoft was asked about this because we haven't heard a hell of a lot about it. Uh, and then this major project's coming up and these, these people are still in their positions. So Ubisoft said that they were all investigated and appropriately dealt with. Uh, but some of those employees are maintaining their positions. So apparently the third party, uh, investigation, uh, either didn't find enough to have these people tossed to their positions, uh, or they were completely exonerated, uh, one way or the other. Um, they don't want to talk about it. Obviously Ubisoft will give the shortest possible answer every time. Uh, for the fact that apparently half of their fucking uh, executive board is is sexually inappropriate at every turn. <laughs> so, there you go. If you care about that, there's your information. Uh, and then lastly with that, apparently more than a few employees have left the company due to this project. Where internally, people have been saying that a lot of employees have left because they were already burnt out from how big the projects for Assassin's Creed have gotten. And then the moment that they brought this down and said, this is the next project, and it was even bigger than everything that they've ever already done before, and now they're combining both studios, uh, people said, you know what? I'm out. They said, no. They said, <laughs> they said, au revoir. Yeah, why? That's there you go. Said. Au revoir. Uh -huh. It would be hard. So there you go. I don't know anyone that's excited about this. Even Assassin's Nobody Creed is. fans looking at it Dude, going. The developers aren't even excited about this. They left the damn fucking studio. Yeah. All right. Yeah. They don't want none of this. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking weird. I don't like, I, I yeah. <laughs> Good luck, Ubisoft. Have fun with that one. Uh, next up, we've got. In news that I didn't think I'd ever hear, Mr. Black, RoboCop. <laughs> I gotta stop there. And that's that's news that I didn't think I was gonna hear. RoboCop. RoboCop Rogue City is a first-person shooter based on the original movie trilogy and is coming to consoles and PC in 2023. Okay. Much like I'm not sure anyone was asking for an Assassin's Creed live service game, I'm not sure there was anyone asking for a RoboCop anything. Nobody is. Uh, but here we are. It's being developed by Taeon, who did Terminator Resistance, which, by the way, wasn't exactly a smash hit, uh, and is being worked on in collaboration with MGM, which sounds like it's going to be some sort of fucking weird movie tie-in thing, uh, and there's been about three good movie tie-in games in the history of the entire industry. 
Uh, and uh, Mr. Black, if I asked you, are there any good RoboCop games, uh, what would you say? I would say no. The last closest thing to an almost okay RoboCop game might be behind you on a shelf somewhere. Yep. That has been and, that um, long. And that, that ain't even good. And that ain't even all that good. No. It was like a, it was like a Terminator ripoff. Yes. Uh, in terms of the video game. So. Yes. Yikes. Uh, but hey, 2023, we're going to find out, does RoboCop still have it in him? Probably not. But we're going to find out. <laughs> uh, next up. Resident Evil Village, Mr. Black. Did you didn't you start playing that the other day or something? Dude, I still haven't I still haven't started yet. Fuck, I thought I thought I, I saw a tweet that you were going to. Did that get like I was going was going to, and then I didn't even stream. Ah so, you know, Yeah. Alright, so it sold four and a half million copies so far. That's pretty Resident good. Resident Evil. Resident Evil, man, it sells games. It does. It sells lots of games. Uh and I suspect it will continue to sell quite well uh moving forward. It's definitely, uh, it's definitely the best Resident Evil I've played in a long time. So, uh, so for sure, I'm not surprised that it sold so many copies. Uh, Ripple Effect Studios is working on a Battlefield 2042. So that's the one coming out this year. 2042 component or mode. Excuse me. My God, the amount of indigestion I'm getting today. Um, uh, a mode that includes fan favorite maps from past games. So this was something that some people were asking uh, about before. Uh, you know, in, in Call of Duty Cold War, for example, there are several returning maps from old Call of Duty games. Fans do like to see old maps return. They've got a lot of, you know, memories attached to certain maps. Some of those maps are just honestly really good maps, so people want to see them come back for various reasons. Some are shit, but they're meme maps, and so they want to see them anyway, like Nuketown 24-7 uh, in Call of Duty is just a complete fucking shit show, but people want to see it anyway. Um, so people were wondering if they would have the same treatment here for the new uh, Battlefield game coming up, and of course, yes, it appears to be the case that they are going to do something along those lines. The rumored maps currently include, for those that remember maps by name, uh, Metro, Locker, Wake Island, I even remember Wake Island, uh, Siege of Shanghai, Erica Harbor, or Arica Harbor, I don't know how to pronounce that, and Caspian Border, which I also remember. Uh, so those are the, the current rumored maps anyway, that doesn't mean any of those will actually pop up, but they seem like pretty safe bets, uh, in the grand scheme of things. Uh, and, uh, I think somebody said that there was a, um, like a, a, a title for the mode that they thought it might be, but I can't remember what it is now. Uh, either way, it probably wouldn't have been right anyway, but uh, we'll find out more about that soon, I'm sure. I suspect we'll get probably an entire, like, showcase surrounding this very specific mode if this is, in fact, uh, a standalone mode within the game that's just revisiting old maps. Uh, I suspect we'll see something like that in the coming months, and so uh, I'm sure that will get lots of people excited because a, a, new, a new game is great, but when you have a lot of old uh, multiplayer maps to pull from that are good to begin with, why not fucking use them? They're there. Use them. Um, and lastly, uh, Dark Souls 3 got like kind of randomly the, 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 uh, the, the embargo for talking about this was lifted at like some weird hour of the morning, uh, the other night. So it was very weird. I was on my phone and I saw this news pop off and it was like fucking two o'clock in the morning or some shit. Uh, Dark Souls 3 was added to Xbox's FPS uh, boost backwards compatibility list. So we've talked about this in the past where some of the backwards compatibility games are getting boosted to 60 FPS if they were originally locked to 30, etc, uh, etc. Et so now on the Xbox Series X and S, uh, I believe that means that, well, Dark Souls 3 is, well, one, backwards compatible, but two, gets up to 60 FPS. It's still 900p, though, not 1080p, and that's mostly because... The version that this is getting pulled from, which is the Xbox One and Xbox One X, which didn't get an update, uh, that version ran at 900p. So there was never an Xbox update to boost Dark Souls 3 to 1080p, so it's still 900p, but it is at 60 FPS. Um, whereas the PlayStation 4 and thus PlayStation 5, if you were to play it on the PS5, uh, run at 1080p 60 because the PS4 Pro got an updated Dark Souls 3 that ran... 1080p 60. So, if for whatever reason they ever fuck it, which wouldn't make any sense, went back and updated the Xbox version, 
Uh, it would run 1080p 60, but otherwise this is just because it's a backwards compact game. Runs the same resolution, so it's 900p 60. Uh, and honestly, most of the people playing that game wouldn't be able to tell the difference between 900p and 1080p anyway. So, it's just yep. doesn't really, doesn't really matter all that much. Uh, and that's all I've got for games, Mr. Black. Did you have anything crop up in, uh, for you that was interesting for games this week? No, I only really saw the Nintendo Switch stuff, so we already yeah, nailed that. Yeah, that one, that one was, uh, uh, was pretty, ma pretty major. All right, well, if that's the case, then it's time to sell out. Tell me what I need in my office, Mr. Black. <laughs> I mean, first off, you need to go to patreon.com slash lag TV and throw all the monies at the screen. Support that's true. the podcast. If you can't, hey, that's okay. Just go on to YouTube, watch the video, uh, hit the like button, leave a comment uh, for the algorithmic purposes. Tell a friend, show a clip, show a podcast, let them know what's up. Mm. Um, and then while you're at it, buy something from Elgato. Link is in the description below. Go ahead and grab yourself a key light, which I'm using right now. Go get yourself a a green screen, uh, some some sound dampeners. Uh, you can get yourself a microphone, the Wave 3 product. I was using that all day yesterday on my IRL stream. Shit sounds amazing. Mm. Uh, it's a plug and play. Just plug it in and go. Uh, when I travel, I'm, I'm just going to be taking my laptop and my, my Elgato Wave and be off to the races. Uh, you can also grab a stream deck and have one big macro hotkey hub at the uh, tip of your fingers at any time. Open up your favorite podcast. Open up your favorite music uh, YouTube channel. Uh, check your CPU usage. Uh, change, you know, if you're a streamer, I mean, then then you're digging down a deeper rabbit hole and you can change all your screens. And, I mean, you can virtually do anything with this thing. Even when you're playing video games, you want to hotkey some spells uh, or whatever it is that you want to use it for, they got you covered. So definitely go check them out. Link is in the description below. You also got NordVPN. You guys have still been supporting NordVPN. They still support the podcast. So keep doing whatever it is that you guys are doing. And that is grabbing a two-year subscription with 70% off when you use the promo code OTT. Go to NordVPN.com slash OTT, promo code OTT, or click the link in the description below. Stay safe. Stay anonymous when you're on the on the internet, whether you're in a public Wi-Fi place like Starbucks or at the airport, wherever. Um, you can use it right on your smartphone, your PCs. Uh, they got an app virtually for everything at this point. It works in uh, in China as well. The Great Firewall of China can bypass that. You can watch region block content. You can watch different regions of Netflix by the click of a button. You can uh, go to websites that are uh, blocking you from being able to see it in your country. So much you can do on top of keeping yourself safe, whether you're public or in the comfort of your own home. So go check them out. 30-day uh, money-back guarantee. For whatever reason, it's not doing it, doing whatever it is that you thought. Um, get your money back. No questions asked. It's a great way to support the stream, uh, what we do here on the podcast, and you get an awesome service all at the same time. NordVPN.com slash OTT. That's it. And now, Mr. Black, it's time for... Movies and TV. Not much of a list this week. Just not much of a no. list. No. Uh, trailer for new animated Disney Plus series, What If Ellipses? Question mark. Aims to explore what it would be like in different timelines with different characters interacting with one another that didn't originally within the Marvel Universe. Um. I don't know. It looked okay. Yeah, it looks different. Like you're you're gonna see like different characters be friends with characters you got some some bad guys that are good guys good guys that are bad guys you got like just weird relationships and they just call it what if in a multi different universe and it's a it's like an animated show too yeah, it's, it's not animated, a live yeah. action um i think it's a cool concept and it's something where they can just kind of get wild with it and kind of create their own crazy story that isn't canon and you know, can have fun with it. I probably won't watch it because I'm not an animated guy myself, but there's probably a pretty big audience for it. So, oh, yeah, I suspect, I suspect a lot because I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of the things that they came up with here were like um, uh, things that they would have seen people ask the questions of many times over anyway. Like, what if they were the yep. bad guy, or what if those two had gotten together? What would that have been like? And uh, et cetera, et cetera. Or what if those two fought each other and they'd never fought each other before? Who's going to come out on top if those two, uh, you know, went toe to toe? So yeah, yeah, I mean, they've got 
so much, so much material they could pull from to just mix and match. They could literally just fucking like throw darts at a board and be like, all right, those two characters. Somebody yeah, go, write somebody go write it. me a story about those two characters. Yeah, it sounds cool. Uh, so yeah, it sounds like it will probably be uh, pretty neat uh, and certainly one to check out for those who are uh, deep into many different characters of the Marvel Universe. Other than that, holy shit, I have nothing. It seems that as soon as everyone heard about Nicolas Cage uh, playing Nicolas Cage, yeah. nobody, wanted to, nobody wanted to even talk about movies anymore. Yeah, and there's not really any big movie news out there right now. It's pretty quiet. Um, I know Black Adam is like wrapping up here this week, and that's pretty much it. I haven't heard much about anything. Uh, Fast 9, you know, has uh, made over half a billion dollars. That's true. Um, which That's is true. a big that headline. Um, outside of that, uh, haven't really heard much. Not much going on. Black Widow is tomorrow. That's true. Yep. Uh, that that comes out tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, not not a hell of a lot. Not a hell of a lot. Have you been watching anything? Um. Well, Kale and I watched. Um, too hot to handle. I know uh, you guys must have seen that, right? Uh, we've seen it. We haven't watched it. I, oh like my. even Did you even watch the first season. No, M and I, oh, even M and I God. have limits, bro, bro. You guys would like that shit, man. Well, like, no, this see, is here, like... here's here's why I haven't watched it. Okay, so I really like I really like fucking Gong Show TV. I mean, I watch Ninety Days. So like, yeah, that's why you like, like it's this, a it's bro. a dumpster fire. But the difference for me is. 90 Day only has once in a while you'll get, like, the bimbo guy, the bimbo girl. Which I fucking categorically hate. I don't know, I don't even, like, find it even remotely entertaining. That show is they found every bimbo guy and every yeah. bimbo girl and forced them to interact on a fucking island. And I, like, even well, I can't process that shit. It's funny. Dude, it's it's a train wreck. It's like it's just watching. It dumb. is. A, it would be. It's dude. Yeah, yeah. I think you. I think you and M would would enjoy. So anyway, we watched that. We binged that in like three nights. We just watched a few episodes each night. <laughs> um, so you bet you still bet you watched that, but you didn't watch Bo Burnham's Inside yet. I did not watch Bo Burnham's Inside. <laughs> uh, I will though. I will. I almost did it, and then we saw the the Too Hot to Handle, so we did that instead. Um, and we're still watching Manifest. Uh, oh, yeah, how's so that been? How's that been going? Now that you're a few episodes in, it's good. We're like seven or eight episodes deep now. Um, that should be hitting so. like its peak stride. Seven or eight episodes in. Yeah, I mean, it's um, it reminds me a lot of Lost. It reminds me a lot of you know your standard TV, uh, your TV mystery shows where it's like the end of the episode. It's like oh. <gasps> You know, yeah. Wait to see what happens next time, and it's like it's it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. It's it's definitely watchable. You watched uh, Tomorrow War, didn't you? I saw a tweet about that. I thought. Oh, I did. I did. I saw. I saw yeah. Tomorrow War. That was fun. Yeah. That was that was fun. It was a little long, but it didn't feel long. Um, it felt like it was well paced. Um, some there was a couple of actors in there that you know they 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 they, they, they that wasn't it. Um, but for the most part, it knew what it was. It was fun. It was dumb fun. And, you know, Chris Pratt was good in the role along with a couple of other people. Um, and it, it's, it's a really good at home movie. You know, if I went out to the theater and had a $50, $60 date night, I probably wouldn't be that impressed, but for at home, it's a good time. Yeah. I, and, uh, yeah. Em and I watched, uh, this was a couple weeks ago now, but we never, I don't think I ever mentioned on the podcast. Um, I had finally, because we finally thought to do it, want, uh, cause neither of us had seen it yet. There, that series, M. Night Shyamalan series of like the split glass fucking. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Glass and split. Which is like years and years and years old, but I never yeah, saw any good. of them. Uh, that's so good. we started that. So the only one we haven't watched yet is glass. We had to, we, we have that on, on our list to watch. Uh, but we watched the first two. Uh, and yeah, those were, you know, those were, were, were pretty good. Um, uh, so far anyway, uh, I, I, I don't know if they're like incredible. Like some people were sucking these things dicks, but they were definitely, they were, they were old Shyamalan is yeah. what it is, is what it is. And, and, and that comes with a, a unique 
you know, a unique style uh, that is entertaining uh, for sure. Uh, and, uh, and definitely kind of its own, its own animal. It's almost, it's like a, not quite, but sort of superhero type gig. What is it? Yeah. A hundred percent. Like, I mean, I'm not going to spoil anything for you, but like split will be, or is it glass? Glass Glass is the last one. one, Yeah. Yeah. So glass kind of, I suspect that's the one that's like really, cause everyone at that point's found their powers and they've been using them for a while. And yeah, you're, you'll see what's up in, in, in the last one. Yeah. yeah. So other other than that, though, uh, we haven't really uh, caught too much. It's just kind of been a, a, a dry week for uh, for that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, which means we're running a short podcast. Time to stop ra- right on in towards X support. Patreon.com slash like TV, as Jeff mentioned, like three minutes ago. Uh, it's a place to go for supporting the podcast. Uh, $10 or more a month gets you uh, a couple of goodies, uh, chiefly at the moment, since I can't ship any goods out. Uh, that is asking us questions each every week on a little post I put up over the podcast called Tech Support. And we answer as many of these questions as we can each and every week, but only for paying us. Capitalism. Dan Jim asks, when did the saying Luke looks can be deceiving really hit home? So when did you ever have the looks can be deceiving thing really dawn on you? What, what, when did that happen? What, what was that about? Uh, looks can be deceiving. <laughs> okay. I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you one. Uh, I mean, and this one, and this is like a, a hindsight thing, but I remember, and this is only relevant because I've been, I've been watching more, uh, more of his, uh, stuff, old, old film and stuff on this anyway, uh, Larry fucking bird. So Larry bird, who's arguably top three basketball player of all time, uh, is like the ultimate hick. I mean, he literally came from like, what's the name of the town? Something lick is like the name of the fucking town he came from. Like five people and a dog live in this fucking town. The average income was like $4 and change a month. Uh, and, uh, did not like not an ounce of natural athletic ability in that man's body. Mm. Not, not muscled up. No, but you can't, couldn't jump to save his life. Uh, nothing of that. However, and he had like showed up, he's got the mullet, the fucking mustache. He's the whitest individual you've ever seen in your fucking entire life. And they'd show up to play basketball and he's categorically known as the baddest motherfucker to have ever walked the earth to touch the basketball. The man show up, you could beat the shit out of him. Didn't matter. He could be injured to shit. He'd play through it all. Uh, and he was arguably the highest basketball IQ of all time. He would come up with passes that nobody could ever even fucking think of in the middle of a game, in the middle of a play, and always caught people off guard. And they were never like these super athletic moves, which I think is part of the problem that people were like, you know, they expect certain people to do certain shit. And he'd be like, just fucking like, they'd be moves that you'd see a dad do playing fucking scrimmage with her son in the like fucking backyard. Like they'd be like, turn around and he'd have the ball like this or whatever. And there'd be somebody to pass to. And the, there's a guard behind him. And he'd just like two hand pass over shoulder. And it looks so jank. It looked fucking terrible. It was the ugliest pass in the world, but it was on target and it was a bullet and it was something that nobody ever thought of. Or he'd do like, he'd just kind of like go around the side with a ball and, and people would bite every fucking time. They put, he'd put it like around their hip and they'd be like fucking like turn around or some shit. It wasn't supposed to work. Or he'd like literally pass underneath their legs and shit. Like nobody fucking like was doing anything like that. Uh, and he saw the floor incredibly well. And then he could shoot the lights out. So, like, there was one game, uh, you know, this guy goes out and he gets fucking clobbered and he shatters his fucking orbital bone. He's fucked. He's got a concussion. He shattered his orbital bone. He goes off the court. His team falls behind because Larry Bird's not on the fucking court. He's out. The doctor looks at him. He said, you're fucked. He said, okay, I know because I'm seeing, like, three things at once right now. He's all, fu- he all fucking vision fucked up and his, his face is shattered. Team's down. He goes back out. It's one of the most, it's one of the most fucking epic superhero crouching maneuvers I've ever seen. He goes out and nobody thinks this guy's going to go back in the game. He gets his warm up coat back on. He goes out next to the fucking clock. 
scorekeeper and like does the crouch that you do when you're getting back in the game and the crowd like fucking loses their goddamn mind because the man's basically just got hit by a truck. Gets out, seeing double, starts shooting anyway, shoots the lights out, pulls the game back and the fucking Celtics win. And this man's walking around beating up shit. Today's basketball, you got grown-ass men, 6'9", 275 pounds. Somebody breathed on them in the wrong direction, and they're out for, like, six games. So, like, the, the, the soccer, man. Like, yeah, it's bad. So, like, like but if you, if you were to look at a picture of Larry Bird not knowing who he was, and you asked, what, you know, does he look, what does he look like he does? The last thing anyone is going to say is the top three basketball player of all time. It's just like, nobody is ever going to fucking pick that. He's the most unassuming looking individual. Show up in like a pair of sweatpants, you know, driving like a fucking minivan. Show up to the fucking court and then just kick everyone's ass. So I'm going to go with Larry Bird. Uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to go with, uh, just, just for funny purposes. I'm sure I could think of better ones, but I'm going to go with, uh, Ron Jeremy. <laughs> I'm going to go Ron Jeremy. Oh Listen, my lord. You take a look at you take a look at Ron Jeremy. I mean he, I mean he's basically and an uglier fucking Danny DeVito playing the penguin. Seriously, you would never think in a million years that this guy hung like a horse. It's hung like a horse and fucks like a rabbit. Um and has probably been inside more vaginas than anyone than, ever. Then yeah, then you know, your entire ancestral history, you know. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to go. He might, he might have also got a bit rapey, unfortunately, uh, Ron. Oh, did he? Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't follow. Ron. Not, not that, not that anyone's looking up to Ron Jeremy in that regard, but, uh, all the same, very much, uh, very much. Yeah, definitely looks to be very much looks to be deceiving for Ron fucking Jeremy. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Lazy Phoenix asks, what was your favorite experience with another streamer or content creator? So let's not choose each other because we've obviously worked together more than anyone else that we've worked with. So we'll choose other my people. My favorite experience? I mean, I think my most memorable was the original um, collaboration with HD Starcraft. I was going to say the same thing. I, all I can hear in my I head mean, is, huh? Yeah, Which is, his, his hit me up with that noise was yeah. her. I'm gonna I'm gonna go and say that just because it was like the first real collaboration that we've done. Yeah, and it was somebody that got me into what I was doing, and I looked up to him, and I was like nervous. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you know, I'd probably go with HD Starcraft. Yeah, I, I, that was what I was gonna pick as well, and honestly. I haven't done like other than when we did live TV collabs, which didn't even have that. We didn't even have that many live TV collabs. No. Uh, I've I've not been, you know, I'm not in like Jeff would have had a lot more because in RP you collaborate a lot. Oh, yeah. um, but you know, for me, I don't. I'm not in doing anything when I'm streaming that really ends up being collaborative. So uh, most of my stuff's from live TV, and and yeah, HD was definitely my my pick. Uh, he was such he was such a fucking unassuming, relatively quiet guy. Uh, and, uh, and we had a lot of fun when we, uh, when we had him on, uh, when we had him on the cast for sure. Uh, and I hope wherever the fuck that man is, I hope he's doing well. I, I don't think, uh, does anyone even fucking know anything? I don't anything? think so. He just disappeared. He got off the internet. That is Good impressive, bro. Good like, on that, him. Cause he wasn't like not high, but he was relatively high profile. So to be able to ghost the fucking internet that well, well fucking done. Uh, let's see. Uh, Fresh to Death Batman asks, any TV show or movie you plan on making your kids watch? No choice. No, oh, tons. <laughs> you've already tons. Give, you've already made him obsessed with a fucking godforsaken goofy movie. So that yeah. mission accomplished on that one. Kayla's probably ready to fucking shoot herself every time she hears, Stand out amongst <laughs> the crowd. Na -na 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 -na. Now you got dad and son fucking singing that shit. Five times uh, yeah. a day. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's there's so many. There's so many movies, like you know, Home Alones and um, uh, you know, The Mighty Ducks and different like family Disney old school uh movies that like make you feel good. Yeah. Um, like TV show wise, like I'm not really sure about TV shows, but there are endless amounts of movies that I would love for him to see. Mm. Endless. Uh, 
I mean, I'm sure every generation says this, but kids' shows today fucking suck. Oh my god. They like, they play to the worst possible parts of an infant's mind. Or, or a toddler's mind, or a, or even young child's mind. It's the instant gratification portion of their brain. Um, and it's garbage. It, like, it, 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 like, I swear to God, most kids are assholes just because, not, not because they watch so much TV, but because the T of, of what they're watching on the TV or in this case, YouTube. Cause there's like more YouTube fucking shit now than yeah. probably actual cable television. So, um, you know, so for me, I'll, I'll be doing my damnedest to avoid literally anything that's new age. Cause it's a lot of bullshit. As far as I'm concerned, uh, I will put them in front of, uh, anything I can get my hands on before. Reading Rainbow will 100% mm. be a part of the fucking household. Yeah. And you know what? Because I would join their Kickstarter, I own every fucking episode of Reading Rainbow. There you go. Every damn one. Uh, so that will be one. Uh, I wish they syndicated Fred Penner's Place, but they haven't yet. And so there's only like a handful of episodes you can even get your hands on. Even Fred himself can't get his hands on those fucking episodes, unfortunately. That would have definitely been a, a choice, a good choice for me, um, for sure. Uh, but there are, like, some other ones there. I think they're safe, but, like, fucking Mr. Uh, um, uh, Mr. Dress Up would have been a great fucking choice. Yep. Sesame uh, Street, my son watches Sesame that all Sesame Street is, is still a good... Uh, Sesame Street's one of the few that have actually evolved in, like, a good, they're still yep. doing educational properly type way. Um, um, shit, uh, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood can't really fucking go wrong with Mr. Rogers. I mean, that, that's the man that literally put, um, you know, uh, uh, I mean, he washed, he, I, I'll never forget, even as a kid, the episode where he had, you know, his, I think he was the mailman. He, he was he was a, a a black man, and this was back back when that wasn't really a thing. And he washed his feet in the pool, and they were talking about all this like st what I loved about Mister Rogers is that love him love him or hate him for his like religious views, but the he never really brought that onto the show. But the um uh besides you know, washing your feet is obviously based out of his uh, uh, religious background. But the, he talked to kids like they were adults, which is like one of the most important things that you can do uh, because kids are smarter than people give them credit for. They notice a lot more than you think. And so Mr. Rogers would frame everything so perfectly for kids. And even if it was a really difficult topic, whether it was death or racism or any of those things that like most people won't even talk about around kids, especially on TV shows, he would do it. And he would do it in a way that kids understood that shit. And we're like, okay with it. And it was okay to feel, you know, uh, to, you know, to, to process your feelings and whatnot. So he, like, there's definitely like a holy trinity of like kids show people that hit on all the developmental stuff that were huge in the eighties, uh, seventies, eighties and early nineties that we moved away from that and just got more and more into, you know, instant gratification, uh, loud flashing bullshit. Uh, you know, visual spectacle, keep them glued to the screen for that reason type stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the Holy Trinity that a lot of people talk about. Reading Rainbow, Mr. Rogers, Bob Ross. So you got like your, you covered your, your ground. 100%, I'll put my fucking kid in front of Bob Ross episodes all day long. If I want them to sleep, Bob Ross. If that man Bob, doesn't put Bob you Ross. to sleep. They put you to sleep. That's the, that's the original ASMR right there, Bob Ross. Yep. The brush, the sound of the brush hitting the fucking canvas, your Making ass is happy asleep. little mistakes, yeah. <laughs> so those are, those are probably what I would go with. Uh, oh, I'll th throw in one more. Get the magic school bus on there. Not the new mm. one. Fuck the new one. OG Miss Frizzle mm. and gang. Some Richard Little. There you, exactly. Mm. What a fucking fire intro theme, thanks to the little Richard, by the way. Incredible. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> uh, oddly related to children, I guess. I guess. Seth asks, have you ever thought about eating the silica gel inside of packages? Oh, fuck no. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, no. No. 
Is that it? that thought has not crossed my mind? And it no. tells you not to eat it. <laughs> literally, yeah, it literally says do not. I mean, but yeah, for for some people, that's like the do not press the giant yeah, red both. button thing, right? Yeah. It's like, yeah. yeah. Uh, fresh to death, Batman with a follow up: roller coasters or water slides, Mister Black? Roller coasters. Yeah, roller coasters as well. I'm actually just not a fan of of water in general. <laughs> I'm not a person that swims. I can. I went through swimming lessons as a kid, and I could swim perfectly fine, but I don't like getting in the water. Not a fan. Uh, so water slides? No, not about it. Ro I'm not even that big about roller coasters, but if I'm choosing between the two, I'll oh, go roller coasters. coasters all day. Yeah. Um. D Neves, I recently transferred to a new job location, and uh, and boy, does the project manager here seem like the most clueless person about the work we do. The amount of cluelessness this person has makes me wonder, how did they get this job? Do you guys have any tales of incredible stupidity or cluelessness of Boy. people in the workplace? Jeez, everyone has this for sure. Uh, that makes you wonder how they were employed in the first place. Could be places where you worked or witnessing it or, or witnessing in places where you uh, went to like a store or a restaurant. Oh my God, dude. I mean, uh, I mean, we could be here for three hours. Well, I mean, we, there's an entire podcast dedicated yeah. to this. Yeah, no, I mean. Dude, I've seen incompetency everywhere. I'm, I mean, and it's usually just coming from favoritism from like people that just get put into a position that like they don't deserve, um, and they're just dog shit at their job. I mean, I've 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 been dealt I I've dealt with lazy servers, kitchen staff that like literally like drop food on the floor, you know, you like just some really nasty shit. Yeah. Um, I've seen it. I've seen it all. Um, you know, uh, babysitters that are fucking not babysitters at all. They yeah. just, it, I, I mean, it goes on and on and on. When I worked in construction, um, you would see people all the time just sitting around doing nothing, just smoking cigarettes, sitting on their phone, doing no work, getting paid. Um, some of them it's, argue it, it, it's because you can only have so many people working on a certain thing at once. That's only it's that's, all that, bullshit, that's not man. untrue, but that's mostly bullshit excuse. Yeah, I mean, so if they you're can sit union, around and get paid. If you're a union worker and you're like, you know, pouring yeah. pavement on the ground, there's only so much you can do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But if you're like, you know, if you're on a job site, or, yeah, you know, yeah. framing and doing whatever, <laughs> like trying to tell me there's nothing to do. You're fucking, you're Grab a broom lazy. and start sweeping some seriously. shit. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Clean up. Like, <laughs> that's shit. like, like the bare minimum that you could be doing would just be sweep the fucking floor so yeah. the job site is clean while we're doing other work. Like, that's like, and, and that's almost never not something that needs to get done. So, like, just yeah. sitting around all the time, yeah, fucking drives me crazy. I, yeah, I mean, look... I like I'm super cynical about business in general because nepotism is such a fucking ubiquitous bullshit thing. Uh, you know, a, a lot of the time people get hired or moved up in a company only partially based on whatever semblance of skill they have and more or less because they know somebody or they're friendly with somebody. And that's just the way it's been for a long time. And it will probably continue to be that way uh, indefinitely. Um, and it results in some in some nonsense. There's also people that. You know, the way business works right now is that management is its own field, and it should be. The problem is, is that management also needs to be specific to uh, whatever job you're doing. So you might have a management degree, but every company, if you're going to bring in, um, you know, new management into the fold from outside the company, because you don't think that an existing employee, let, let's say a tenured employee, has managerial skills, they might be really good and know what's going on on their floor, but not everyone is... is uh, prepared to be moved into a managerial role, uh, and you need to go outside, you still need to give this person a lot of time, you know, three, four weeks or more on the floor with that highly skilled person that just doesn't have managerial skills so that they can learn what the everyday operations are in that specific place and not just try to apply like fucking random shit that they learned, uh, getting their degree because you end up in situations where, uh, where the specialist employees will look at their manage management like they're stupid because they really don't know what's going on. And then the I've decisions a, they make are bad. I've got a hot take, man. I, I think I, I don't, I really do not see the point 
and getting a managing degree um, at all. I just, I don't think personally um, it does anything uh, outside of your very basic fundamentals on leadership and that's pretty much it. Being a manager is being a people person. And that is something you don't learn. It's something that you do by doing and through experience. It, it, you know, being a man, being taking management in school might help you if you are very specific in a very niche or a, a very specific um, business. It's more of a corporate environment. But if you're talking a, about management at like a restaurant level, it's, then it makes more sense to move somebody up. Yeah, it, from the floor. It, into yeah, the position. It, exactly. You want to you want to put people that understand the business and that have that earned that position. You're going to have people that if you bust your ass at, at work and you get that promotion, you're going to get somebody that will be there for you and will be a ride or die for you instead of having somebody come in that knows nothing about the business, but they got a degree and they're put in there and they're trying to tell you how the business works when they really don't know how the business, the, the, the business that they're managing actually works. They only know how to quote unquote, be a manager, um, on, on paper, but they don't know how to manage this specific business. It's, ah, man, I, it is. So it is. So, so I went to school for management, right? That was my degree, management and marketing and economics was my three disciplines. And I agree, management, most of what I learned in my management side, um, while there were a lot of technical aspects to it that, that can be applied everywhere, the majority of the skill, or not the skill, but the useful knowledge that you get happens from working within the company that you're managing for. So yeah, that's why... That's why I preferred, like originally before I stayed here, when we started up Lag TV, Loblaws, which if you're not Canadian, is like one of the biggest national brands of anything. They they run like fucking half of everything here in Canada as far as retail goes. Loblaws had a management trainee program. So even if you went to school in your management, whether you're MBA or otherwise, they had a program that would, that recognized that while you obviously have certain skill sets having taken that degree or done an MBA uh, leading up to that point, you still need to fundamentally understand the business that you're going into and manage. So they have a six month program where you go store to store in different places across the country. You learn the operations side, you work alongside of the people that you'd uh, inevitably may be managing. And the reason why they do that, uh, and there's a counter example to this is that largely not all the time do they have somebody that even though they've been working there for a long time, are are capable of of doing management properly. So they might they might be very good on the floor. So for example, our buddy Crimp, uh, Cleveland, he's the youngest manager a manager a manager in Loblaws history of one of their uh, main branches here in Halifax, uh, and he got there. Um, working not he didn't go to school for it he just worked the back shift at this location while he was ironically at university for a different degree at the time and then uh it just so happened that on the other side of his degree the they were having a major retirement wave that was coming through and they were looking for people to fill those roles some of them got pulled from their management trainee program and some of them uh, were internal, where they thought the person had actual managerial skills, while also already they wouldn't have to be retrained because they were part of the business. So he already knew that branch, so they moved him up. They still put him into a bit of a trainee program. It was like a, a two or three months instead of six months, where they had him traveling different parts of the country and whatnot, learning the managerial side. It was like the reverse. So if you came in from having a management degree, they put you on the front lines to learn the the ground floor stuff and if you came in from the other end like he did they gave you the managerial side so they sent you in the other direction so Loblaws is a good example of knowing that the best management comes with a hand like a bit of both some people are naturally managerial worthy but they just never went to school for it and they're working a job and that's like 
prime real estate for a business because they don't have to spend money retraining them. They just move them up and it's beautiful. But unfortunately, that doesn't always pan out that way and they have to pull from the outside. And then, uh, and then obviously, while it's not ideal, getting somebody that's at least been trained in, in, in a generalized management scenario is more useful than just pulling a random person uh, and putting them into the role. So it's definitely a... Um, like, management's such a fucking weird thing. And that's why you have great managers and you have fucking awful managers. And unfortunately, most of the time, you have awful managers. <laughs> like, most of the people you talk to hate their fucking managers. It's not its not the commonplace for them to be positive about their management. It's, oh my god, my manager doesn't know what the fuck they're doing. Uh, and, uh, uh, and, and yeah, you get a mixture of that. Th that management that everyone hates can be people they brought in from the outside, but more often than not, it's, uh, and I suspect it's probably the case in retail and stuff like that, that end up being floor managers and stuff. It's somebody has been there for a while working and they're friendly with the person that's ahead, uh, yep. and they get moved up and they don't, they're, they're just not cut out for it, but they're there anyway. And then everyone fucking hates themselves and they already hated the retail job, but now they really hate the, <laughs> the retail job and the painful cycle continues. So yeah, there's... Everyone has to put up with that shit. It's kind of just the way of the world. Um, and, uh, but that's why when you get a good manager, treasure that shit. Yep. Hold on to that shit like it's a baby and never let go. Uh, because you don't get them very often. Uh, uh, uh Alexa asks, any plans, uh, for vacations out of the province or, uh, out of the country coming up now that places are slowly opening again? Uh, I mean, I'll go to Vegas. Um, I might go in October, depending on where the world is at. Uh, get my second COVID shot, like a couple weeks. Mm. So, and that it's only July. So, I mean, we'll play it by ear. It's not like I'm gonna go and book tomorrow. Um, but I would say as I probably get into September, kind of see where the world I suspect is I flights mean, are still going to be very easy to get your hands on even if you're like booking a oh, yeah. week in advance yeah, because yeah. people are still not going to be traveling all that uh, yeah as long as there isn't like some crazy variant that's out there just fucking everything up or whatever like at the end of the day when i get my covid shots and my you know my wife's got her shot and my parents are already there and stuff like you got to get back to normal at some point. I can't live in fear for uh, forever. <laughs> so, you know, I want to get back to um, some sort of normal, and I haven't had a vacation in a while. World Series of Poker, I think, is happening then uh, this year. So um, I might go out there and go to Vegas for five days or so and just kind of relax. That That's my plan. If not, it'll be, you know, probably New Year's or something like that. Figure it out. Yeah, um... Uh, I don't, I mean, I, yeah, I don't, uh, the only out of country thing would be M and I going back to the Philippines to see, to, to visit family. Um, uh, but that's even looking like it's probably not going to be like, we, originally it was going to be spring 2022. Now it's looking like that might be pushed even further just because, uh, while North America, you know, is lucky with vaccines and the vaccine scheduling and stuff, most of the rest of the world that isn't the super wealthy nations aren't really doing well they're all doing pretty categorically fucking awful uh right now so uh it looks like that might be uh pushed back a little bit more so the out of country stuff not so much m may with a friend of hers uh go down to the states to visit one of her other friends that moved there to do nursing in the states uh but you know i'll let her just go and, and do that and spend time with her friends um otherwise we might do like a, a little in province cape breton thing or something like that um, and, and just kind of do it that way. Not for any other reason than we don't really have anywhere other than going back to the Philippines that we're dying to get out of the country to, to go and do. So, uh, so nothing major in that regard. Uh, and a lot of it too will also depend on, uh, you know, variants. Like right now, two mRNA vaccines seem to hold up pretty well against, uh, the Delta variant. That's the one that came out of the UK. 
Um, are you getting? So you're getting your second shot. So well, mine's on the twelfth. When's when do you, when did you get yours rescheduled? I think uh, probably I'm a few sure days after that. Ka- I know. I think it's the the following week. I think it might be the nineteenth. I'd have to ask Kayla. Yeah. something like that. No, that would yeah. make sense because you were you were about a week after I got mine yeah. too. I think it's either so it's either sense. that week of the nineteenth, the next next week. I I, know, I have to go ask her. Yeah, you're, but you're also probably getting Moderna for your, Moderna, your second yeah. shot. Yeah. So yep. here in Canada, yep. we got clearance to do. Uh, Pfizer and Moderna, one after the other, instead of like waiting to double up on Pfizer because our shipments got pushed back. Like my original one would have been September second, but it got pushed to like the fifteenth without rescheduling. And so, uh, yeah, we're we're uh, able to to use one of each. So that's why we're getting ours a little earlier. But yeah, the the Delta variant is is relatively well covered, so that's not a big deal. You know, the only thing that will change, you know, our plans to go to the Philippines or whatnot is. With all these other countries not dealing with COVID as well as we are, um, variants are still going to be popping up because so many people are still getting COVID. And so, especially in the UK, for example. In fact, I'm not, I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced the home of Delta will also be the home of whatever the fuck comes after Delta because the UK is opening up on like I think the 19th or some shit, despite the fact that they have the worst cases or case rates in the entirety of the EU, uh, the EU right now. So there's a good chance that we're probably just going to see another variant come out of the UK. Um, but uh, but for now, thankfully, we're blessed here. We've got our vaccines and we'll at least do some interprovincial uh, travel. And and yeah, like Jeff said, you know, no vacations uh, in a while. And and uh, we're lucky enough to at least stretch our legs a little bit and, and not be as concerned uh, as uh, as some places. Um... What are some movies or games, this comes in from G-Bros, that turned out better than you expected? Sleeper hits. Uh, Movies. um... Oh, sorry, Delta came out, sorry, Delta came out of India, that's my apology. Uh, fuck, sleeper hits trying to think here uh movies that came out better than i thought oh fatherhood fatherhood on netflix with uh kevin hart oh yeah yeah yeah. that shit was way better than i thought it was gonna be (laughs) like way better like one of the best movies i've seen all year okay uh easily might actually be the best wow um way better ultra sleeper yes like Big time sleeper. Um, video game wise, oh man, I can't think of too many. Man, it's rare yeah. that a game is better than I expected versus yeah. worse. Uh, yeah, I, can't I mean, think I'll, of I'll, 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 I, I can say that I didn't think that that inside was going to be as as good as it was when I watched it, I just thought it was going to be another Bo Burnham special. Like another, like, you know, I was probably going to like it. It was probably going to be okay. But it was like so dramatically fucking different than I thought it was going to be. Uh, that, uh, yeah, it was, it was wildly different. So I'm, I'll go with that for like movie or TV content. As for games, fuck. I, uh, wow. You know what I'll say? Resident Evil 2 Remake. Uh, I didn't go. think I didn't think remaking a game that was as good and as beloved as Resident Evil 2 would turn out nearly as good as it did. Uh, but holy shit, it's now the gold standard for remakes. Uh, and by no small margin. Uh, nobody else has really done a remake that, that quite approaches it. Well, it's like that and then the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 remake that just came out not long ago uh, was mm-hmm. also really well done. Um... I would say those two kind of took me by surprise more than anything uh, because of just that. I mean, when you say remaking, like I said, Resident Evil 2, that's uh, that's a fucking sketchy proposition. You say remaking Tony Hawk 1 and 2, which are some of the high two highest rated, excuse me, sports games of all time. Yeah. Uh, two specifically. Um, you know, that's... Uh, and then making it so that people give a shit about it in 2021 because it's not like skateboarding is as, is as big as it was you know, when, uh, when those games popped up, uh, you know, that's, yeah, that's no small feat. So I'd say those two are probably it, but like, I don't think there's been games that are like new games that aren't remakes that have like taken me by surprise. Like, Oh shit, this is incredible. Like, I, yeah. uh, not really, uh, anything that's, 
that's caught me off guard. Like I said, most of them are, oh shit, this, I thought this was going to be incredible, but it's not. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the opposite way. Yeah, I can't think of any games off the top of my head. Um... Mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh, oh shit. I don't know if we can answer this one off the top of the fucking head. This is a, this is a... One does not simply answer this question, Mr. Black. Jorbok asks, If you are a Power Ranger, what animal is your Zord and what is your special attack? So if I'm a Power Ranger, what animal is my Zord? First of all, what color are you? And are you are you, are you Black Ranger? Uh, I because the Black Ranger wasn't always racially profiled as being a black person inside the suit. So to, you know what? You know what I am. You know what I am. I'm the Matt Gray Ranger. All Matt right? Gray. Oh shit! You're the you're the uh, Mercedes Gray. Yeah. Matt I'm the Gray. Matt Gray. I'm the Matt Gray Ranger. Okay. All right. And. My animal is going to be the chameleon. Okay. So you've got the, the color with the least or the, the shade. It's not even a color, it's a shade with the least amount of color, but the, the animal that you're choosing is ironically the one that covers the greatest spectrum. That's it. It's And my ability is to be able to morph myself color-wise okay. into my surroundings so people can't see me. Okay. All right. I dig it. Impressive for a Zord sized thing to disappear into the fucking background. That's, yep. That's useful. That's a useful Zord. That's a fucking useful Zord. Uh man. I think I think I'm going. What color do I want to be? Probably, honestly, I'm stuck between between red and green. But I'm probably gonna go green. Okay. Because I can't get over my fandom for the Green Ranger back in the day, the original series. Green, that eventually went like the White Ranger. When what when when he came back as the White mm. Ranger, like the, my mm. childhood fucking changed, bro. It was a little fucking weird that he was playing a dagger like a flute. I didn't, you know, but when I was a kid, I kind of looked over the fact that he was playing a dagger like a flute, but that's okay. So it's hard for me to get over that. So I'm going to go green. Uh, and yeah, actually, yeah, Jorbonk, this is where, the joke where I was going with this. I'm gonna go with the frog. There's never been a frog Oof. zord, and my superpower is, bitch, I'm jumping to the fucking goddamn moon. My, I'm, I'm literally Mario. I'm gonna jump on top of your head. That's my superpower. Or, if I need to get the fuck out, I'm just getting out. I'm jumping peace. away. I'm just peace. hopping away. I'm out of here. Alright, it's not bad. That's the... We just picked some of the fucking weakest ass animals to be the fucking so like the old if you think man. bro if you think about the original fucking animals it's like pterodactyl triceratops tyrannosaurus those are, rex those were dinosaurs you know fucking and I like, guess chameleon is still kind of dinosaur Mast mastodon chameleon frog <laughs> <laughs> uh shit oh we Fuck. There was a frog zord? Oh, fuck. Here I was thinking I was oh, being there you go. original. There you go. I fucked yeah. up. Um. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, shit. Oh, phone. Don't do me dirty. There we go. Almost to the end of them here. This is this segment's carrying this podcast. We were done 55 minutes in. This is a very light week in news. Uh... Wait, what? Okay, hold on. What are these you heard? This is just worded a bit a bit wonky. What? Oh. Um Okay, this is a little hard to describe. I think I know what he means. So G Bro's asking, uh what what is something that you heard about in the past? So like that a lot of people were probably talking about like it was big news in some way shape or form. That you heard about in the past that you wondered why anyone was even talking about it in the first place because it didn't seem to make sense as to why it was such big news and then eventually you checked it out and got into it after all like you so you were thinking why is everyone even fucking talking about this thing doesn't seem like it's all that important but everyone's like running their mouth about it then you look into it and you're like oh i get it and then you're kind of like part of the part of the rest of the crowd talking about the shit that ever happened to you you ever look from the outside and be like that's fucking weird and then kind of get into it mm. i feel like they he just described the entirety of the joe rogan podcast 
I mean, like, that's every episode of the Joe Rogan, but Joe Rogan woke up, what's the big deal about insert this topic? And like, let's get a guy on to talk about it. And then, like, for the next five guests, he just talks about the previous shit that he just got into super hard because he had, like, fucking, what's, like, Goggins came on, and now he can't fucking stop talking about waking up at 3.30 in the morning and doing 16,000 push-ups and talking like a robot for the rest of your life to earn your best life. Like, that's, that's like the Joe Rogan podcast and fucking... In a fucking nutshell. Uh, jeez, <laughs> I don't, I don't fucking know. But have you I tried don't... DMT? <laughs> you know, I wasn't really big on it until I tried. I was like, what is everyone talking about DMT? Bison. Have you ever tried bison? Have you ever eaten bear before? <laughs> <laughs> Absorb um... its power. I, I, I don't actually know, man. You guys ask these most bizarre questions. I'll um, say Breaking Bad for me. I, I still didn't think it was the greatest thing that I'd ever seen. Like, it was talked up a lot. And I got into it, like, three years after it finished. Like, I came in way late. Like, nobody was even mm. talking about it anymore, really. But, like, that's all anyone talked about forever. And then I finally watched it. And, you know, it was pretty good. But, like, I, I didn't think it was amazing. But I got it. I got why people were... We're talking about it so much. That's probably the best example I can think of off the top of my head anyway. Well, I was thinking of more of like real life shit, you know, where I was oh. like, I heard about something and oh, not that. like movies. I'm talking or shows. I'm, I'm thinking like real oh. life. You heard uh. you heard some shit and then you're like, wait, what the hell? Um, I got a really weird one. All right. Um, walking or running barefoot versus using shoes. Like, when I first heard about it, I was like, and people were talking about it, this was many years ago now, I was like, oh, fuck, you know, that, you know, I didn't think anything of it, I was like, because you don't think about the fact that shoes aren't exactly the most natural fucking thing in the world, other than, other than protecting your feet from stepping on sh something sharp, which, you know, back in the day without modern medicine was pretty much fatal. I mean, like you get a cut on your foot, you're fucked, because it gets infected very easily, right? But beyond that, most people walked around, they got calloused feet. And their feet were tough as shit. And so unless you stepped on something real bad, you know, um, you know, they were walking around barefoot. And so, you know, after a while I thought about it and I was like, you know what? I'm going to give it a go. And so I started uh, walking and running on the treadmill barefoot. And uh, the first thing you notice is that you use a completely different set of muscles when oh, you yeah. run and walk barefoot versus using shoes. Uh, and you can't walk for like three fucking days after you go on a treadmill uh, and run or walk barefoot for the first time for that very reason. You use a lot more of that muscle that that lines your uh, that lines your shin bone. You're using a lot more muscles in your feet than you would normally. And the your your the way that you walk, like when you're in shoes, because your your feet are cushioned, you tend to go heel toe a lot because your heel is protected, and so you're not hurting yourself every time you hit uh, the ground. But when you start walking barefoot, you don't have anything to protect yourself anymore, and your body kind of naturally takes up this, um, uh, uh, the, you're on the pads of your feet, that upper part underneath your toe, or, or below your toes. You walk on the pads, and you'll run on the pads. I already ran on the pads of my feet anyway. I was never a heel-toe runner, but walking, I'd always walk heel-toe. And then when you come out of shoes, then all of a sudden I'm also walking on the pads of my feet, and it just changes everything. Uh, and then what I discovered also is I had more endurance. It was weird. I could run longer and I could mm -hmm. walk longer than when I was wearing shoes, which I, uh, people talked about and I was like, that doesn't make fucking any sense. And then I did it and I got it because it worked. So I still do it now. Uh, whenever I'm on the treadmill, uh, pretty much exclusively, I'm barefoot, uh, walking and running. Mm. I would say for me, um, I would say the pyramids is something that I... <laughs> I I remember when What's I was younger. What's the deal with Stonehenge? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember watching something, and there was like, as a kid, there was this finding at the pyramids, and there was all this talk, and I was like, yeah, didn't really think anything. And then as I got older, I was like, ooh, what is really going on? How were the pyramids really made? And I went, I, <laughs> I dug, I went deep, deep Aliens. into the rabbit hole. Aliens. <laughs> So yeah, I, I would say I would say the pyramids is probably one of those one of those things. Um, yeah, that I that I, I pyramids had a, are fucking wild, bro. Yeah, that I I had I had a like a six month period where I was like kind of obsessing over pyramids. 
Uh, there's, you know, there's a lot of stuff. You know, we obviously do some very complicated things, you know, as humans in general, and, and we certainly haven't gotten any less complicated over time. But you gotta, you, you just gotta respect some of the brains that came up with, you know, some of these concepts and things that led to these massive leaps in architecture, like the ability to to cut these massive stones um, in, uh, is, is it Machu Picchu or another place? Can't remember now, but they're like, basically they're so tight together that you can't even slip a fucking piece of paper in between the two of them. That's yeah, um, crazy. Uh, like, and, and like, and it's not like they use like fucking magic. And it's not the aliens didn't come down in laser beams, you know, we're fucking cutting the shit. It's just like, but you got to respect that. Like people sat down and like, they were just masters of very specific shit. And people coming up with these concepts for the first time. Um, and yeah, the pyramids were made with enormous amounts of slave labor and probably lots of people died making them. But yep. even to think about the methods in which the slaves would have used to get the rocks into position in the first place. Crazy. And align, and to, line, you know, to line everything up, you know, uh, like a lot of uh, old architecture was, you know, uh, astronomically uh, in, in alignments with various things. That's all crazy. It's crazy. Oh, when your me. life's on the line, you do some crazy shit. You, you know, do some they, crazy they fuck, shit. If they, if they fucked up, they probably killed, right? So they probably made sure the shit was absolutely perfect i would have loved to have seen the pyramids brand spanking new i bet you oh, that man. shit looked crazy. fucking crazy when they yeah. first finished that shit because a lot of them i know there was like uh they're thinking that they it wasn't just like the stepped rock but they actually had like finished sides to it and that's yeah. been eroded over time so like imagine like it would probably fucking shine like a goddamn fucking light bulb when the light would have hit these things it would have been nuts yeah, uh, it's, it's no crazy. wonder it's no wonder people were worshiping these these you know pharaohs and shit having these built over the course of their lifetime uh you know it, my god it's crazy so yeah no i agree i've de i definitely have had i think everyone's had at least some short por you know portion of their life thrown away to watching pyramid shit it's, it's kind of like everyone's rite of passage into holy shit we used to do some pretty dope thing uh things uh yeah we only got a couple more here um Dr. Samurai, what, well, I already know Jeff's answer to this. What sport would you guys like to commentate together on? Don't suppose it's UFC? UFC. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, fuck. Uh, I mean, I don't know any sport well enough to do anything other than color commentate. Like, I'd be, I'd be like, you know... It's like it's like in the NBA they have like Charles Barkley and Shaquille O'Neal who both were Hall of Fame basketball players um and can speak obviously a wealth uh, about basketball in general but it doesn't necessarily make you a good play-by-play -play commentator uh for example and not all players make good coaches which which I say that to say that not any individual player always knows everything about basketball well enough to talk about basketball outside of their individual position and perhaps the opposing position that they would have played against. Um, but in that regard, I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, sure. UFC color commentating would be kind of fun. Uh, basketball color commentating would be kind of fun. I already do that sometimes just for shits and giggles. Um, uh, yeah, shit. I do. I would commentate anything as long as it's color commentary. If I if I enjoy watching the sport already, because then it's just fun. Then you're just the the thing about color commentating is that you you only need to have like a relatively like a certain depth of knowledge of the sport that you're commentating, and the rest of it is just making it entertaining for the person at home. You don't like the, you had. It's the same mechanic Jeff and I had in StarCraft. Even though we were casting every man's StarCraft games, you have a straight man, which would be Jeff. He's the guy that actually plays the fucking game and gives a shit. And then I'm just there to basically spin off as many memes as possible based on Jeff's stuff with with the addition of the of the far less knowledge base that I had about StarCraft uh, to make it work. And that's how, like, every pair of, of commentators works in every sport. So, yeah, I, I just put anything. But I'm sure that the first thing on the list would be the UFC. Um, uh, Jay Kim, do you guys have the lag TV versus Sonic 06? We never did Sonic 06. That was Brian and I for Shitty Games Done Slow. Um, I have it, but it's not available anymore because uh, when I wiped everything, well, it could still be on the Twitch channel. You can search it and make sure. 
but other, otherwise, I still have it locally, but uh, I deleted a lot of stuff on Twitch when, uh, when that whole thing was going down. Um... Oh, all right. These are the last two, and they were not too not too hard to tackle. You said last two is four. Well, you know, it's like one more game. What's the biggest flex you've done to impress someone, Jeff? It's coming in from Brian. What's the what's the what's the big? And I I know you got to have a couple of goodies in there because you you were definitely a man that enjoyed doing the a little bit of the flex for the ladies back in the day when you were uh, when you were exploring the ocean deep. So what do you got? What what are your what are your fate what are you, what are your top what are you, what's your top uh, selection of your uh, got a flex for the ladies? Um, <laughs> the biggest flex. I don't know, man. Back in the day, I I didn't really have much to flex with. Uh, I, I, mean, I have zero you know, for this. It's all Jeff because I I'm know, such a I, boring fucking individual. I've never had anything know, to flex with. There there might there might be a few dick pics out there, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> from back in the day. There might be, you know, there might be there might be a couple of them hanging Check out. Check out Jeff's know. iCloud on thefappening.com. There you go, man. There you go. That's probably the biggest flex. What, what about flexing all that uh, that Ed Hardy the, gear? The Ed Hardy stuff. Okay, yeah, I guess you know, you know, it's probably a good one. Uh, Where you like go to work oh, for like Twitch. three weeks Yo, and then what? buy a single T-shirt? Oh shit! Does he got Ed Hardy? Okay, he's, he's currently leaving the room. Does he have one on tap? Does he get some Ed Hardy outside? <laughs> Does he got some fucking Ed Hardy? Hold on, let's see. Oh no, he's got the old hat. Oh my god! Oh, there it is. so you still have that thing? Yo, I cleaned out the 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 basement. Oh the, my the god! Room, and in a box was you know, the old flex. You know what Ed Hardy is, bro? Ed Hardy is if Liberace was trying to pretend he wasn't gay. There you go. Look at that. <laughs> Now that's the flex. Fuck you, dude. You you literally would work like three weeks at the fucking restaurant and then go buy a t-shirt to wear that weekend. That was I Ed Hardy. Have this. Look at this. Look at these rhinestones. 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 Fucking oh rhinestones. My. Look at that, man. Look at that. Look at all of those fucking sequins, bro. This was a flex, man. This is like a $300 hat back in the day. Yeah, that's a big flex. Yep. And what's what's crazy is like these little rips that was part of the design. That's you that know intentional. That was, the, that was intentional. Those rips. That's that's a hundred of the three hundred dollars is the intentional rips. Yep. In the hat. So yeah. I'm gonna rock this. I didn't have there any flex, go. bro. I drove around. I I wore I wore fucking old navy. I drove around in a fucking Toyota Yaris. It wasn't exactly the sexiest fucking get up in the world. Uh, the only flex I ever had was literally when I was in shape and in, in my twenties, that was about it. Other than that, none. And I was with somebody the whole time. So there was never a flex moment. Never yeah. happened. All my, all my potential flexing has been, has, uh, you know, it's, if I was a single man, I'd be flexing, but <laughs> I ain't. No need to flex been, anymore. Haven't been for a long time, so. It is what it is. Uh, last one comes in from Volcus. Any thoughts on the natural gas line that lit the Sea of New Mexico on fire recently? Oh, fuck, I saw that shit. Yeah, it was crazy. That looked like it came out straight out of fucking, uh... uh like fucking, uh, like, a, like the, the, the King Kong movies, the, like, a like, a the Godzilla shit. It looked shit like when Pacific the, Rim, bro. Yeah, like the shit comes out of like the water. Kaiju or like, whatever they're called. It looked like they were summoning fucking Cthulhu. That, yeah. Like, when I first saw the, when the first video popped up, that I saw it was from the helicopter and it was raining. And because of, like, the rain and the way the helicopter was moving and everything, it looked like a cut out of a movie. It looked yeah. CGI. It didn't look like real life. Like, it, because of how everything was moving, it looked fucking fake. And so when I first saw it, I was like, oh, that's like an artist's fucking rendition of what is currently happening. That can't be real. And then no, I found out... That that was actually happening, and I was like, "Oh my god, what the fuck?" Yeah. Um, yeah, um, you know, my first thought was, "Man, I have just not been using enough paper straws, Jeff. I need to use more paper straws because if I don't, the environment's fucked." 
It's all yeah. on me now, Jeff. There is literally nothing else we can do but use cloth bags going to the grocery store and continue to use as many paper straws as possible, or we're fucked. The amount of money that's burning up in that ocean right now is absolutely insane. Well, they did. They get like until it was like five, six hours. They clogged it up, so it's good now. We, okay. like, it's back in back in action. But oh, okay. they definitely spent a few dollars <laughs> in the meantime. <laughs> that's for sure. That's for oh, sure. Shit. Uh, but yeah. I mean, that, how do you even how do you even go down and fix that shit? That has got to be probably the most dangerous. Somebody got job. paid a lot of money to fix that. I mean, think about that for a second. That shit is raging at the like bottom of the ocean. When it's so raging that it's a it's like a fucking tornado, tornado funnel of fire coming up water. from the oceans deep, yes. and it's bigger than the oil rig platform off to the yeah. side of it. Like, how do you physically go down there and patch that bitch? I mean, the <laughs> amount of heat and fucking... Imagine being down there and seeing this shit. Like, in the water, going, what the fuck? It's like, it's the closest thing to the sun you're ever going to get. You're like, what in the fuck? And you got to patch something? <laughs> like, how do you fucking even do that shit? That is fucking insane. Yeah. It's actually insane. Uh, I, when I saw it, you know, I was just like, oh my god. I was like, first of all, the first thought that came to my mind is, we're so fucked. <laughs> we're so... <laughs> we're just so fucked. Like, and the discussion around the around it, like, the whole concept of, like, the, the joke of, like, you know, it's, it's up to the individual to, you know, uh, climate change. We gotta, like, do our part. You know, drive a hybrid. You know, don't idle right. your cars. Paper straw. And it's not that those are all bad things. We should totally be doing those things. But the fact that, like, BP managed to come up with the carbon footprint idea to, like, shift the attention to and the blame onto the general consuming public and then, like, ignore everything that they do to fuck the ocean on a daily basis Dude, what is... A, what about all the stuff that they've created for us to consume? You know well, what I mean? Well, like, here, that's the thing. Like, it's, people... It's crazy. People act like if we hadn't... If, if people weren't so hell-bent on profit maximization for the last, you know, 100 years, right that the average person wouldn't have known any different. Like, if we had tracked differently, where we had stayed to a point where we weren't just doing everything shortcutted to make the most money, to, you know, abuse people, capital, uh, et cetera, et cetera, and, like, fuck the planet up to get whatever we wanted because we just assumed that it would never be an issue, that the consumer model that we had, like, people would give a fuck. It's like, well, you wouldn't have your iPhone! We were saying that, like, if we had tracked differently, that I would know what the fuck an iPhone was, and I'd care in the first place, or that it would be dramatically different. It's not like the medical field, which is probably the most important part, you know, education and medicine, the two most important, you know, components to quality of life would have suddenly catastrophically folded if it wasn't for, you know, climate affecting uh, moves. There, That's like a, a small fucking postage stamp. So like short of that, you know, who's going to give a fuck? And I'm ready for a little bit more climate change. Uh, I want to get a little hotter here, and then we'll, <laughs> you know, then we'll pump the brakes just Bro, a little the bit. The West you know, Coast, they're getting fucked. Did you see? Did you see what the shellfish and shit? I, I've I've seen all the shit. So like it's the one crazy. billion that the estimate a shellfish that cooked alive and washed up on shore. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I yeah, it, it, and, it, you know, consumerism is obviously a thing. If you looked at consumerism, though, I bet you we're consuming less now than we did in the 90s. The 90s was, like, unfettered fucking consumerism. Oh, yeah, it was just crazy, yeah. It was, that it was, was wild. Oh, that yeah. was nuts. I mean, when I think about myself personally, and obviously, as, like, anyone in this business, we have a lot of electronics and shit like that, but, like... I'm not somebody that, like, constantly replaces shit all the time. I'm, I still wear, like, fucking t-shirts and sweaters from 15 years ago. Like, I, I'm not somebody that, like, spends a lot constantly replacing stuff. But it's true that people do. And we could probably do better about it. But at the same time, to pretend that this isn't in the majority a problem of, like, major business just going completely unchecked and fucking on the world is a bit of a meme, if you think about it. Uh, and that was like the, that was the perfect, that was it. That showed up my timeline. I said, oh, chef's kiss. This is, this is it. 
This is humanity in a, in a single fucking 15 second uh, picture. We're all fucked. <laughs> this whole thing's yep. fucked. Yep. Uh, and on that up note, it's another Technical Alpha podcast, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to be it for this week. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hopefully you enjoyed yourselves one way or the other. Uh, we'll be back next week with uh, with more of whatever the hell happens. Maybe we'll actually get some news. It's a little bit slow this week, but uh, we always make the magic happen one way or the other. Until then, stay safe out there, guys. It's still a wild world. We're not out of the woods yet. For the love of God, just keep wearing masks and social distancing. It's not going to hurt you. Nope. Even if you're vaccinated. Just why? Don't stop. Just keep fucking going. And we'll be out of the woods eventually. Until then, peace. Peace.